on this week's episode of Forever I Do. Went to the car, we watched Bad Company. We left the car, went to Carlos Cafe, locked down Carlos Cafe. Went to Priscilla's. Priscilla's. The people are running out of the place for four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from there, we went out a couple more times. And um, sparks and, flew. Yes, yeah, sparks flew. Mm-hmm. Please, but look. Look at what you'd like to have first of all. What is your wish? And then work with what best creates that look and feel for you. This is forever. I do. when you cross a Man U supporter with a Liverpool fan? A 14-year marriage. Here's Leighton and Yolande. Okay. (laughs) All right, let me start the story. Mm -hmm. All right, so back in 2002, back in 2000, actually, um, I was a news editor at the Star, and Claire and I were looking for a reporter who had certain skill sets. Um, Claire and I had thought at the time that we needed some people who were multifaceted, work on their own initiative, and were smart. We needed we needed to build a team of really smart reporters, which I think we accomplished. Anyway, so we did an interview with one Yolan Giles, and she was quite impressive. And um, I remember when she was leaving, just after she left, Claire said to me. So what do you think? And I said, she seemed like she fits the bill. Because we're looking also for particular characteristics, intangibles that I think eventually we managed to build that unit. So um, about two years later, I was going through a separation. And I just said to her one day, you know, um, well, let's go back a couple of weeks before that. And wait, ask no. her out. Rewind. <laughs> Stop. Pause. This happened in 2002, not 2000, okay? No, it's 2000. I'm not asking you, it's 2002. In 2000, I was working at TVJ. Oh, sorry, go. Yeah. So, 2002, when did the interview? Yeah. Okay, cool, right, go ahead. Take it over. No, your turn, because you're telling a story. No, 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 but, <laughs> so, so basically, um, it was a difficult time. Um, I was going through a separation at the time. And... Um, in some very random conversations with her, Yolan struck me as somebody who was really mature. I mean, she was really young, but she was really mature. And I found I could communicate with her. So at first, when he was asked, when he started asking me out, I wasn't feeling that because I saw problems on the horizon. At the, he's my editor. He's my supervisor. I never want that kind of situation. However, we got along. It was very natural, just chatting with him, even as a friend. We laughed, we enjoyed a lot of the same things. I thought he was mentally ill, really mentally ill, like needed medication, but you know. And so after a while, I had just also just come out of a relationship and I said, why not? What was, you know, I like him and I don't have to death. Suppose you go out on the one date and it don't work out. That's That's not a problem. So I, I said, you know, can we go out and have a chat? And she said no. And she said no. And I asked a couple more times and she said no. <laughs> and finally, I wasn't having it. <laughs> about June 2002, she relented and we went and watched the movie. It was, tell me, it was not a date. It was, it was a conversation just to help me vent and get rid of all the angst that, that I'm going through a, a separation which eventually led to my, my divorce. <laughs> And we went to the car, 
We watched Bad Company. We left the car, went to Carlos Cafe, locked down Carlos Cafe, went to Priscilla's. Priscilla's. People are running out of the place before four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <two places. laughs> and um, then I went home. I remember when I dropped her home, and I was I was living on um, on Grovial Drive on Anne Crescent at the time. And she, of course, she lived, was living on Servitude, and so it was a, like a family drive home. Bless. And I remember thinking that was probably one of the most pleasant experiences I've ever had. That was not. It was there was no intent behind it. It was just a situation where I needed somebody to talk to because it was a difficult period and it was it was a stressful time on, on the desk as well. And um, from there, we went out a couple more times. And um, Sparks and, flew. Yes, yeah, Sparks flew. Went out on the one date and from there, you know, I mean, I just, every time I look back at it, that was the longest date I've ever been on in my whole entire life. It's like eight hours or something like that. It was long. It yeah. kind of was seven o'clock or something. Yeah, something like that. We never left till four. When we he dropped me home at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, so, you know. And it was just supposed to be going to the movie. Yeah, literally. We were only supposed to be going to watch this one full, full movie. And then, but no, movie went to Carlos. And then, imagine, they, we locked down two places. Yeah, two places. And then don't exist anymore. Yeah, that's And we're that's still here. Yeah, yeah. But the funny thing about it, you know, as I said, it was... It was just a conversation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything else. And, and, I, and I'm being very, very sincere about this because there was no intent for me to date. I'd Lying gone out, <laughs> I'd gone out a couple of days before Lying. and they were complete disasters. Um, I'd gone out with this girl and uh, took her to Red Bones and she, what well, I might tell you, I thought my life was messed up, but CR was it worse. So we said, oh, I'll give this thing a period for a while. Because, you know, you're hurting and you just need some space to just get rid of just to find some like a salve for what you're going through and she turned out to be the perfect salve I mean inadvertently and it, it just it worked beautifully I remember I was being sent on a course of magic editors in Virginia that was the 18th of July yeah on the night before we, we kind of just agreed that this was going to be it going forward. And for the time I was in Virginia, we, I don't know how many hundreds of emails were exchanged. Mm -hmm. It was, it just felt like the most natural thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was pretty much how, you know, we are here. We are so <laughs> about two years later, Leighton went away again. He went on vacation to Boston. Was in October, yeah, end of September, early October. Yeah. And so one night, we were, you know, we're talking back and forth as always. This time, cell phone just really take hold in a Jamaica. And so lots of calls via cell and all that. And then, so Boston started to get really cold. Really cold. Really <laughs> cold. And Boston in a summer cold. So you can imagine September, October when fall just starting. And it, he was, was, it was ranging from about 38 degrees to about 42 degrees in Boston. Yeah, time. and he was staying with his uncle, who was a very frugal man. Let's just put it Let's that way. Let's put it in my head. Yes, 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 his family. <laughs> yeah. Suppose him see this. Yeah. Anyway, the uncle did say, the <laughs> uncle said, he did not turn on the heat until uh, October 15th. Uh, until October 15th. The government yeah. said, he did not turn on until October 15th. Yeah, but I used to walk around the house in, there is this big, um, what do you call them, comforters? Yeah. And I used to wrap myself in it because I was literally freezing. And I was on the phone with her and she said, Why are your teeth knocking like that? <laughs> literally. You can hear the teeth chattering <laughs> the way cold. And I'm like, What is going on here? Anyway, so this night in particular, he's on the phone with me and we're talking. And, you know, I really. And he's in the bed, wrapped up in jackets. No, I was in the coat. You're in the coat, yeah, okay. Put him have on the jacket and him wrap up with the comforter and everything. And my teeth are chattering. And in between the chattering and the teeth, he's like, you know, I really love you and I can't see my life without you. And one piece of go wrong. And I said, I won't really go on for this. <laughs> And he's like, you know, honestly, I know, you know, I, I, I know I said I probably wouldn't do this again. And after what I'd been through with my first marriage, but you just seem right. And I can't see my life without you. And I want us to get married. I'm saying, wait there. I said, I said, what did you say? 
Yeah, yeah. they just have to go about that there. You say yes. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I don't have a problem with it, but you have to talk to my father. And so, yeah, I came back to Jamaica. came back to Jamaica and after much prodding, yeah, I had a talk with her parents. Her parents, there are a lot of similarities between her parents and my parents. Her mother, former principal, my mother, former vice principal, they both went to Shorto Teachers College. There are a lot in common. But there is something rather intimidating about her mother for me, even more so than her father. Her father is, a, is the most relaxed, laid-back guy you'll ever meet. I think he is probably my, my, my hero <laughs> in terms of... So anyway, I sat down in front of her mother. And, and father. Yeah, and then I mumbled and stumbled my way through asking permission to, to get married. And she, her response to me was, you know, you're a journalist, and I'm a little bit disappointed with the way you presented yourself. I thought you'd have been more articulate I thought you'd have been more articulate than that. Yeah. So, her father then jumps in and says, you don't know what take so long. <laughs> so, so, you know, with that, you know, I got permission to, you yeah, to, to marry her. And we became officially engaged. Yeah, went down to the pavilion and out to bought a ring. Oh yeah, this story is good. And um, the other side was official. We, in between that time, so this is about 2004, 2005, Leighton got a job in St. Martin. So he had to leave Jamaica. And it was very, so at that time, so I was just, I had switched from print to radio. And as that nationwide, I started producing and I'm really enjoying this job. But the intention was always Leighton goes to St. Martin first and then I go join him. But I'm really loving my job. I wasn't sure about this joining him team. Yeah, and was... my parents, my father was like, listen, you made a promise. If you decide you're going, you're sent to the man and this was a plan, you have to go. Because I've done that job for everything else. Yeah. But it I was just weird because if the guy called me and said, so when did the lady come in? And I was like, this is I Christmas there. before I went to St. Martin and just the journey there, my bag lost. Yeah, bag went to me, me, me end up and spend night at Puerto Rico because I missed a flight. And yeah, but listen me, enough. listen me, I was over St. Martin before the <laughs> reach. Gosh, yeah. Right? So I don't know about this going. And so I spent that Christmas with him. I don't know about this coming here to leave and all. Anyway, fine. With a heavy heart. <laughs> I packed my bags and I went and joined him in St. Martin. So we in St. Martin and I'm like, Leighton, the wedding, we need to plan what's going on. We need to set a date, what's going on. Boy, let's stay here and make some money first and we can use that money to... We say, okay. Yeah, because we didn't know. We saved up a lot of money. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Which eventually we didn't yes, even spend because yes. we sat down one day and said, why are we spending so much money for the wedding? And because we were looking at, you know, we had a expansive guest list. Yes, enough people. Hundred odd people, yeah. all kinds of different things. And then we said, Jesus, look on the budget. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yo. So we came to the conclusion, let's find somewhere in Jamaica that can do everything. And then for a fraction of the cost. <coughs> so well, before, we, we, before I reach this up. All right, go ahead. Right? Because I have to get this off my chest. <laughs> okay. So, we dear now. Um, late, when is the date? We need to set a date. What's happening with the date? When are we? And in the phone, oh, I don't know. And we need to find a time when all. Yeah, when is this time? Okay, so December is out of the question because I got married in December the last time. So we definitely say, yeah, me now married in the same month. We didn't marry the first one. All right, well, how about summer? No, summer this and summer that. While all of this is going on, we may see news back and forth from Jamaica. And the next thing Missy said, Beanie Man and the Angel engaged. I'm say, what you say? I'm dead set. I'm say, what you say? And Beanie Man and the Angel must have just did meet the Christmas before and she do one steam fish female kind of something. I know she have a ring and dead set. No, look here. My head chip. I say, no, 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 no. How? How? Beanie Man and the Angel are going to marry before me. How that happened? Oh, that happened. And me work so hard? No, no, no. You know how much steam fish me give? No, no, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, we agreed to a date after I went on and I ranted and raved and carried on and he said, okay, fine. Part of the problem was the deal. Mm -hmm. Hear this now. Part of the problem. No, no, no. Part of the issue was this. 
getting in and out of St. Martin is a chore, huh? You have to get a, a, a re-entry document and it's 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 bureaucracy like you can never believe. So that was part of my worry going there because first of all, when she came to St. Martin in the first place, there was a time before you got your, your documents. Yes, before I was legally able yeah. to work. So, you know, it, it takes a while. So my worry was ensuring that her paperwork was okay and my my my, my was pretty okay for my got there. But the challenge was just to ensure that there would be no challenges getting out of St. Martin and then coming back in. That was part of the concern that I had. And of course, I was trying to find the right time in terms of, you know, making sure that everything was okay. That, that being said, <laughs> we are finally agreed on Thanksgiving, US Thanksgiving weekend, because that would be the time that my family could come in and everybody that would be the, the easiest and best time for all of Plus us. Plus I invited a couple of friends from overseas. Right. And that, that would probably be the best time for right. to come. Eventually we had peered down the guest list by the way. Yeah. So about thirty So people. here is here is a tip for people getting married. Destination wedding. Right? No matter if you live at Kingston, don't have a wedding at Kingston because then everybody can come. So that means that enough people are gonna come and have something and you have to go feed all of them. Destination wedding, the people that love you the most are the ones, are the the ones who will show up <laughs> because they have to go find them own a hotel and them own a this and them own a that. And we managed to pair that down. We got married in the grill, did everything at the hotel. Nice hotel, the grill escape. Yeah, they, 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 took, they did everything. They did everything. How would it, it go? A show and did all the money and that was and, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So all of the stress that goes with preparing for a wedding. The only stress that we had was on the wedding day when I was late. Because <laughs> I was staying at a separate hotel. Yes, people came late for my wedding. <laughs> the, traffic, the traffic was ridiculous. I'm afraid I might call me. I said, you know, it is usually traditional for the bride to be late. But never the groom. That I might in traffic, you know, heading towards the hotel. We're waiting to start at 4 o'clock. <laughs> when we're ready to start now, I remember say, Jamaica have law said the wedding happened before the sun go down, right? And with and the grill with them, so. We don't want sun go down and all these things have a wedding door up. I mean, they don't know when everybody... Well, I go to the shepherd because I'm scotching there. Yeah, because they are telling me my wedding can't start because my mother-in-law don't reach it. <laughs> I mean, say, oh, that affect me. She have a wedding already. I'm my turn. To make, to make, to make. So they have to give me some scotch up in my seat. <laughs> yes. And then, and and then it, was, it was, after that, it was, just, it was probably one of the most beautiful, probably the most beautiful moment of my life. Um, next it to your child being born. Yeah, next to your child being born. But notwithstanding that, the thing is, the, me being late allowed the wedding to unfold to the point where when we are just about to we finish, the sun was setting mm -hmm. and it was slightly overcast. Mm -hmm. So there was this sunshine sort of like coming through the dark clouds. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful and it, it worked out perfectly. The, the moment for me at the wedding, I don't think I've ever mentioned this to, to you all before, was after we completed the ceremony, which was itself interesting because the pastor was was a very interesting fellow. Her mother came over to me and she hugged me and she said, I saw that last. And that for me, I had to step over for a while because tears started to come. A bad man don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the moment when I really felt like, yeah, I'm officially a part of the jazz song. And that was... That was the the moment for me in our wedding. I mean, the, the, the wedding itself was great. Um, watching her walk up with her dad in a I love the wedding dress. Her hair, she had cut her hair down low at the time, <clears throat> and it was just it was a powerful thing. Just watching her come through with her father, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. The people who were closest to were all there. Well, mostly because mm -hmm. one some some people couldn't make it because. Mm -hmm of extenuating circumstances. But I think there were like 30 people there eventually. <clears throat> people who mattered to us. And the occasion was just so poignant and beautiful. And um, and the setting was just right. You know, it was right at this, the edge of this, this, this shore. Um, we were under a gazebo kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like. <clears throat> And you know, and I think it reflected who we are. We are not very fussy people. Yeah. We, 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 we Pump and pageantry, that mad me. And ladies like that too, we can't deal, that's not our personality. So one whole heap of confinement and this that we could, that's... Yeah, it was, it was, I think it, it reflected right there. Who, and who the beach, 
<clears throat> very relaxed, very yeah, and not a lot of not a lot of fussy. We don't do fussy. We are yeah. never that type of. People. So it was it was great. It was just you know <clears throat> it's a you know a lot of men struggle to remember their wedding anniversaries. I have never struggled with it. Hello. Serious. Okay. <laughs> I've never struggled with it. And she can't become it. But seriously, because um, it's it was one of these. Look, when you live long enough in this life, you start to realize these things that are really important. And up to that point, there were not that many things that resonated that way with me. That was perhaps one of the one or two moments before that that were that said Okay, this is one of the things that you, you have done right in your life. Because I've, I've made a lot of mistakes, everybody knows that. Um, but this was one of the moments where you said to yourself, <clears throat> if you should die tomorrow morning or die tonight, this would be the one thing that you would have gotten right. And, um, you know, so far it's proven to be the case. Still to come. Because if you are both alike, then you would have a boring existence. Yeah. So you have, you have to celebrate the differences. Right, and it's the differences that make it beautiful. That make it beautiful. So, Imagine a big, big, proper, proper Manchester United supporter. Married to a Liverpool. Married to a Liverpool man. But first, we talk to Dr. Paulette Teichel Hussman of Thai Flora Lux, the go-to partners for destination weddings and events. I did my Master's in Botany. And in between doing my master's and my PhD, I started, I couldn't find a job, so I started working for a farm in St. Anne that grew roses for export. So my entry into the business was in agriculture. I was on the farm producing flowers and then later on trying to assist other farmers to produce very high quality product to export. And the farm started having too much product and so they were dumping quite a bit and then I met my husband who was in the hotel industry and he said why are you dumping we need flowers in in the hotel so we really started out by delivering one bunch of orchids to a hotel and then they asked us can you do bouquets and I said of course yes <laughs> I didn't know quite how but we researched and we tried and we delivered our first wedding bouquet 20 years ago and we have grown ever since. We do have a lot of requests for roses. We always try to bring in an orchid, or also a very big, um, big flower for weddings as well. But we try to bring in and capture different colors and different textures. So if you have a color combination that you'd like to have, we try to work with some, some standard product, but also some unique things that we can put together so it's a unique look for just you. For me, I like to design with angles and shapes and colors, and some of it is actually quite technical to execute. But in order to create a cohesive look, quite a lot goes into it. Um, but we have an amazing team of carpenters and upholsters and um, you know, teams that bring a look together. Sometimes they're almost impossible to create, but we figure it out. We work with budgets of all sizes. So we, we do weddings from as simple as a bouquet and a boutonniere. And then, of course, there are all the add-ons, the tents, the lighting, the type of draping, the chandeliers, the tables, the linen. We carry a complete inventory of those items. So it can be very simple or it can be very extravagant. And a lot of times we work with our clients to, with the budget that they have, to create a very special look. So we also guide, okay, don't spend that much money here, but really spend it on this part if you are having, you know, if you are having a smaller budget, for example. And we always try to make sure that all clients are very, very happy. Look at what you'd like to have first of all. What is your wish? And then work with what best creates that look and feel for you. Um, sometimes the simplest weddings are the most beautiful. So it really depends and we can gu guide you very carefully to say, you know, create this look, use this backdrop, use this chair and add some stunning elements for a very, you know, for a smaller budget to create still a very beautiful and amazing look for you. We um, pride ourselves on being able to source 
almost any flower from wherever in the world you'd like to have it. So we say to our clients, really just let us know what you'd like to have and we do the hard work of getting it into the island and making sure it's fresh and perfect for your wedding day. We probably have on the island one of the largest inventory of event and decor items. Um, we custom make our own linen. We have seamstresses that will stitch anything for you. So you can select whatever color pattern you'd like to have. And our seamstresses who are amazing can do this overnight. Sometimes we're asked to do that. So they're very fast. Um, so we like to encourage you to customize, especially for linen. We carry a wide inventory of chairs, um, tents, um, different style draping and chandeliers, um, lighting accessories as well. Anything that you need to create a complete look for your event, we have it in stock. And if we don't, then we try to get it for you to make sure that you can have what you want on the day. We like to actually do weddings that are off-site and in very remote locations and just to sort of help clients to scope out that very special spot and we do offer that service because Jamaica has so many amazing locations that are not always featured and a lot of clients do want something that's unique uh, to them. So we work island-wide and there are beautiful locations island-wide and um, if you want to have an off-site location, we can definitely create that for you with ease. We have wonderful partners that do catering and we can pull the entire team together so that on the day off it's a seamless. We are a full service event company, so we do everything from planning to decor to um, installation and of course our floral designs are what we're best known for, but we really are a complete one-stop shop for weddings. So we also specialize in furniture and different types of linen because you really need all of these elements to create a fantastic look for the clients. We have an amazing team of wedding consultants and I'm always available, of course. And once you contact us, we start working right away um, at looking at what your, what your wish is for your wedding day. And sometimes I like to see just a few pictures. I like to see the wedding dress. Um, I like to know a little bit about what color you would like to have. And then we start to work developing the concept for your wedding, working very closely with you. Because of course, on that day, it's all about what you would like to have mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Um, what we're very well known for is that we are e we're able to customize. And so we ask our clients to feel free to dream and we'll make it happen. Our destination weddings, I think, are our largest part of our portfolio. So we work with almost all the hotels in Jamaica. So um, when you call them, you'll be calling us. <laughs> so we are very happy to, to work with you. And I think what I can say about Jamaica's product is that it is amazing. It is unbelievable what the hotels do to make sure that their clients are happy. And we work along with them to just create whatever their clients would like to have. So I want them to feel encouraged to come back. We're here, we're waiting, we're ready. And we're so happy that this will probably soon be over with. And we can get back to the really amazing business of doing weddings for our very special clients. Go to our website and reach out to us from there or if that's www.typeflora.com they can contact us um, on our US numbers found on the website or reach out to us on our Jamaican number which is 876-979-8113. Thanks Dr. Tai Chan Hussman. Now let's get back to our couple, Leighton and Yolande. Hello, Hello. Leighton and Yolande. And you're, you're watching Forever, forever I, I Do. do. Leighton is an open book. What you see is what you get. And Leighton, one of the things that I think I love most about Leighton is that he has never changed. I cannot say to you that this is not the man I married. This is exactly the man I married. This was the man I lived with. He can't cook. Always a promise to cook. I always swear I'm not eating it. Um, he laughs. He's re he's... When Leighton laughs, you have to laugh too because... He, I mean, in loving sports, he, every single thing that Leighton has always been is who Leighton is still today. So that's, I think the one thing, whoa, 
Also, what I like about Leighton, the things about him that have changed, because when we first started dating, he wasn't, he never sure about his children and fatherhood and all of that. And so he's changed that completely. In fact, he wouldn't, I'm sure he wouldn't mind having one or two more children that would be on him. He sort out his problems for him. Oh, sign him about fine. But, so that has changed about him. He has now, he fully loves being a father, fully, oh my God, why didn't I do this sooner? And he will speak about the things about him, the things about his personality that have changed over the years. He's, as I say, he's an open book, so there's nothing really, I can't think of any one thing. Yolanda is, Yolanda makes me laugh from day one. Everybody knows who knows her, you know, <laughs> she's insane and she is in a really good way. And, um, but let me, you know, in hindsight, the, her being a mother, I think, has brought out qualities that they were always there, but they've shown, they shone more brightly in motherhood. Watching her be a mother to Chase is, is, it's moving. Watching them, she actually thinks that they're in a relationship. <laughs> My son quite believes me at the end Yeah, because just even just the other day he was saying um, he was hugging her and he broke away and he said, Listen, um, we have a cabinet that is it is because uh, married men don't like to see their wives here. Yeah, the men get intense when they see their wife hugging another no, man. <laughs> so, so but the, it, it just emphasizes um, the type of mother she is. And I think that's a benefit of what her parents are. And having lived and experienced them for the last um, 17 years, it's, uh, it's, it's just passing on what she's learned. I mean, I never had a great relationship with my dad. Um, that's, not, that's an open secret. But it's a lesson that I have learned that I'm passing on to my boys. Um, but her, her skills as a mother have raised, I mean, my, I, I, I don't think I've, I could have thought more highly of her before she became a mother because I've always thought she's 10 times smarter than I am. Um, she is so much more mature. In fact, my growth has a lot to do with lessons from her and she's a lot younger than I am. A lot. <laughs> Did you stop? <laughs> and, um, Many years. And she... So I learned a lot from her in terms of my own maturity, my own development. But watching her evolve into a mother was, is, is and continues to be one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever seen of anything. Um, so that's probably the thing that's, that stands out most for me in terms of her and living with her. Because when we used to live together in St. Martin, that was fun. Uh, we had a cozy little apartment on the, on the beach and it was really great. And it taught us a lot about each other. Each I think other. I think we understood then that yeah, we could actually coexist in a in a marriage without killing each other. Yeah. So, um, but just watching her evolve, and because I've been prodding her like for years, and she can't tell you this. I was prodding her for years. Go get your master's degree, and she was like, ah. She went and got it. Distinction. Boom. So I started prodding her from the day after the graduation. I said, yeah. I so think the, so the, so the PhD. When the PhD, I go. <laughs> But she just started thinking about it now. So you see, her, because Yolanda has so much potential. And it's something I've always tried to encourage. That people have, I know she, she jokes a lot and she's funny and she has this, you know, pretty interesting side to her that a lot of people engage with and connect with. <clears throat> but her intellect is far, far more superior than I don't think even she understands. You know, so, you know, her growth her continued growth is, is, has been an incredible experience. I think you need to realize that every day is not going to be roses and, oh, I love you. There are going to be many days and you're still there. You again. Because, I mean, you are two different persons and your, your spouse, whether intentionally or unintentionally, they're going to think so piss you off and you have to take a decision it's a decision you get up every morning to say I will love this person 
I will work on it with this person. Sometimes they're going to have to walk away and say, I can't deal with you right now. If I can deal with you right now, I'm going to kill you. Right? I'm not ready for a prison. All right? I mean, these are the things. You have to be realistic. I have to be honest about it. Um, him, him do things. Sometimes him just breed on him and I. <laughs> yeah, listen. He's, I am not a morning person. I take a while. Boy, keep it so well. To get to, and don't talk to me before I have my coffee. As my, uh, if me, if we turn in at the bed, him start a discussion. No, we are talk to me for it's too early. Me not me not me can't listen, process that right. Y'all are nineties. See, that what they wake up. Every day, like opens her eyes at six fifteen. She not awake at the day. <clears throat> Literally, she saws out. Me the minute time awake. My and then the, like, the thing is, I love to sleep. He must sleep malice. <laughs> Right? So you know, say, that is a... But I love him nonetheless. I have to grin and bear sometimes. Some morning I was sitting down to Leave me. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to wake up. Or, and then you have the other months where I will try to engage. Okay, the man wants to have a discussion. Let us try and talk with him. But you have to be conscious and realize that everything isn't going to be perfect. It's not our mills and bones. It's not... Yeah. But in that think, Snow White or Alice in Wonderland. One real one reality is that, that a lot of people um, don't pay close enough attention to I find is that people think the hard work is wooing the woman, getting her to agree to marry and then getting married. That's when the work actually begins. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a, is constant work and I don't want it to sound like it's it's painful, it's not. Because yeah, like, sometimes it's painful. <laughs> but it's it's, it's like you have a job that you enjoy. You know, it doesn't feel like a job because it's a process. You, you, you still have to be able to um, negotiate, compromise, make sacrifices on behalf of the other person that you live with. And it's not a situation where you say, okay, you put on the ring and then you put your feet up and then that's it. That's the mistake that a lot of people make. And we live in a world now where I think we're, we've become so selfish. Yeah where people think only about me and what I want. Um, yeah, if you're if you going to have, you have a successful marriage, you have to start thinking about the we. Uh, how that works in the collective of the family, how it works in the collective of just being able to give your partner the space, but the support that they need for them to then reciprocate. Um, too often, I think people go into marriage and think that, okay, I move so you move so I will do it in our home. That's not a marriage. That's you two people living in the house, you know, on a run roof. You have to be able to find commonalities and have a level of understanding. And you're not going to get it right all the time. That's the other thing that people need to understand. There is no perfection about this. Marriage is a process. And there are going to be times when you make mistakes. There are going to be times when you, when you get annoyed and you start, your, you will have your quarrels mm -hmm. and you will have your, your disagreements. But once you understand that this is part of the dynamic that makes the marriage work, because if you are both alike, then you would have a boring existence. Yeah. So and you have you have to celebrate the differences. Right, and it's the differences that make it beautiful. That make it beautiful. So imagine a big, big, proper, proper Manchester United supporter. Married to a Liverpool. Married to a Liverpool man. And brainwash my boy to become a Manchester United. I did not brainwash him. I did not. The child is right. The child is right. The boy has been brainwashed. The child is right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leighton and your land. Here's to many more years of happiness and wedded bliss. On the next episode of Forever I Do. So we stop our bank, right? We stop our bank before we go pick her up. Because you have to be lobster. <laughs> You know, you have to make a good impression. You know, make a burp and feel good. Them kind of thing. And go bank the drama money. So I'm loaded. <laughs> and the, the young lady don't come here and say, we can go to Burger King. Say, thank you, Jesus. This is the girl. <laughs> Plus, Narda Simpson shares some makeup magic, while Carrie Spencer has all you need to know on nailing those hot hairdos. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Makeup services by Nardine Makeup. Coordination and planning, Shakima Hines of Island Bride, Jamaica. 
Set Decor Thai Flora Lux. Forever I Do is filmed on location at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, your wedding destination in Kingston, Jamaica.